Hey, hello, uh, good evening. Uh, by the way, uh, I apologize for being late, so that's why uh, we started late uh, because it, it's a long way uh, to walk from uh, Expo. So, okay, um, today I'm talking about uh, my journey with PHP Unit um, and then on Drupal 7. Okay, um, my name is Ken Chua. Uh, this, actually is a, it, this journey actually started uh, some time back and it got accelerated a few weeks ago when I was uh, consulting Zion on uh, how to do some mocking. So hence I'm presenting my learning journey and uh, maybe if you guys have actually um, experience and better ideas, you can let me know as well. So, okay, how it got started. Um, I was uh, in my previous job back in 2014, I was actually doing JavaScript programming. And uh, somewhere down the line when I was doing JavaScript programming, I got to know of this Jasmine test framework, which is TDD. La. Because always we hear TDD, test driven development, but what, what, what is it in, in reality? What is it like in concrete? That's when I got to know Jasmine test. And uh, so I uh, realized the value of TDD because especially when I was doing visualization, I need to make sure that the numbers that I pump in is, and the output is uh, as expected and not uh, um, being truncated or being uh, malformed. So that's why test is very important for me. And when I joined uh, SPH back in 2016, I went back into programming in PHP, but I carried these experiences of test-driven development uh, to my company. And understanding that, because I work for the Straits Times website, so there's a lot of processes, like every morning, um, basically the news that you see on the, on the hard, hard copy uh, newspaper actually has been uh, digitized and then sent in and then pumped into the, our website so that you can see at every morning at about 6 a.m. There's a lot of business logic that actually, when, when I got to know it, I felt that we need tests to actually uh, make sure that all these are up and running correctly instead of like uh, having some uh, uh, subscribers unable to read news uh, early in the morning. Hence, yeah, so then come with this year, understanding that we are PHP Conf 2018 and the PHP unit creator is here. I got super excited la, because it's like, I mean, all this while I've been knowing uh, PHP unit but never got the the inertia very high, la, very hard to start. But now the creator is going to hear, coming here, so at least I need to try and start. And then if I've got questions, I can actually drag him and then ask certain questions. Uh, anyway, he's also uh, giving a workshop. Yeah, so that's why all the more I wanted to try before I meet him in person. And um, so that's why I wanted to get started out. And because my system in, in SPH, we are using Drupal 7, um, the slightly um, complicated stuff is that it was not pre-packaged with PHP unit, it was pre-packaged with simple tests. So I need to find a way to integrate PHP unit. So I had to actually Google around to search for how to actually... Um, installing is not an issue, Composer install very easy. It's just um, where to place the PHP unit XML file and all this and how to write tests, uh, which... That's why I was saying that um, sometimes let me see, I need to find, yep, correct. So they have the next, oh yeah. So what is PHP unit in case we do not know? Anyone do not know PHP unit? Just raise your hands. Okay, so, 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 so this is the um, very nice introduction of um, allowing, allowing PHP programmers to write uh, tests for their PHP application. Simple, short and simple. And uh, the creator, in case, so when he comes uh, this September, this is his face, this is the logo of PHP unit. Uh, I'm going to say hi, actually, Sebastian. Yeah, so the thing about TDD is important, but the thing is always, um, how do I start? Um, and that's why I was trying to get to my point three for the second paragraph is that sometimes I feel that it's always easier to start writing tests when you have a smaller application compared to my system which I inherit and it's really so gigantic and then I'm like, okay, how do I actually put in my test framework? So that is the part where I've been googling around and trying to find an answer to it and then fumbling around and things like that. So, so coming up will be a demo. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how I actually uh, wire up um, this uh, PHP unit into my Drupal 7. And I'm also going to walk through like how, I, I guess uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through some tests as well as the mocking part which I actually consulted Zion, which 
I felt was not um, the Google as in the online documentation and the online tutorials so far wasn't so uh, specific and exact that okay you actually have to hello 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 <laughs> Or low, low power. Use a big voice. Okay. Um, so uh, I need to find out how to actually do mocking um, through my own um, trial and error. La. So which I'll, I'll show you. So, okay, that's the thank you slide, which is too fast. Um, let me show you my code first. See, because I can't mirror my. Oops. Okay, can. So, I'll just I'll just stand up because I think it's easier. Okay. Um, one thing about um, actually yeah, uh, before I start, I I think I got ahead of myself. Anyone uses Drupal seven here? Don't have ah. Uh, okay. So it may be a bit steep, but don't worry. I mean, anyway, it's recorded. Next time, if you all use Drupal 7, or better still use Drupal 8, then, then no worries. Uh, this one, Drupal 8 is prepackaged with PHP unit, so don't, no worries about that. Okay, thank you. Test, test. Okay, so first thing that um, from Drupal 7, one of the first few tweaks I have to make is that um, by default installation of Drupal, um, the host is, uh, is written as localhost, so I have to change it to 127.0.0.1. That's the first change I need to make. Uh, now, let me move to the actual uh, code itself first. Where's my mouse? Okay, my mouse. Okay, another thing I need to uh, uh, make a, uh, say, say something about Drupal 7 is that because Drupal 7 is still um, using procedural PHP. That means not so OOP. So I have to actually squeeze, I need to plonk in OOP into Drupal 7. And that's why you see classes. Um, so I basically had to encapsulate my logic in a class. You know, and uh, this is an example. Uh, so like, for example, check sum, we receive a value, you know, and uh, generate number, return a fixed number. And then I have a function that actually queries a database and a function that calls a function calls this function here and then make some uh, echo out uh, return some string from there so this is the part so in drupal 7 uh, when i first started actually this is not necessary i don't i don't have to use classes which was uh, nice as a beginner but not so nice when you want to do uh, more advanced stuff Okay, the rest is uh, the, sim the, the usual um, Drupal 7 kind of stuff where you hook and then you are able to, like you hook, you, you ask Drupal 7 that, hey, you know, if I use this URI, you know, uh, run this function and uh, this function will process something. Yeah. Now, my test, okay, this is the part where where my test is located. My test is actually um, in the root folder. There is a test folder. Am I pointing the right one? Yeah. yeah, okay. So there's a test folder where I actually, um, based on the um, module name, I put in my test in there. Okay. This part which I've commented is the necessary, which, which uh, I found on, online on Google. Uh, that means in order to um, uh, have Drupal functions available when you're doing your PHP unit tests, you actually need to bootstrap, which means you have to do the define Drupal root and then uh, ultimately until the Drupal bootstrap, that bootstrap full that line of code. So this basically then empowers the PHP unit test, right, to actually carry out certain uh, default um, Drupal library modules functions. And then uh, further down, okay, this one's confirmed unit one, uh, all PHP unit tests, you need this line. 
And then uh, that's where I start to write my test, the simple ones like uh, assert equals. Um, so here is where I will actually um, instantiate my class. You remember the class that I, instant, uh, that I created here in the file, in the module. I instantiated and then I will uh, call the function from there. And then based on the values that I pass in and the uh, expected output. And then I just run the test from here. Um, is it is it confusing so far? Is it okay? I hope it's not too deep. <laughs> okay. Now um, this is the part about mocking. Uh, mocking part one. Mocking part one is basically um, before I actually talk about mocking. The rationale about mocking. Okay. When we when we uh, run tests, when we want to do tests, the thing is we probably have uh, many like fifty tests that we want to run on our system every time before we um, deploy it, before, before we uh, live the application. And 50 tests, if that, you, you don't want to wait like one day for the 50 tests to run finish or maybe like one hour to wait for the test to run finish because then it slows your, um, your, your it slows down your time to, to live things, it slows down your productivity in a sense. So hence, um, one of the major things that can slow down a test is when your test actually needs to uh, perform database queries. If your database is actually, which is like ours, is like um, at least 40 gig size, so it will take very long time uh, for querying. So hence the value of mocking. You, you assume that the database query works, so the thing is, when you are testing, right, you, you, you make certain assumptions so that as to speed up your, your testing. For example, if I want to test, let me go back to my module code. Huh? Okay, so the part where I was, okay, this is the part. So you can see that this function is making a database query. Okay, and imagine, and, and over here, this function is actually used over here. Okay, so, the thing is, when I'm testing for this function, right, I don't exactly have to, you know, go and retest, go, go and uh, query the database to get the results and then return back. You know, I could, because my focus is just to test this, not, not this. Hence, I'll make an assumption, I'll do a mocking of this function. And mocking means I'll, I'll put a fixed value like that. Every time, if PHP unit goes to that function, right, you will actually just return the result that I, I asked it to do, which is how it looks like over here, which the syntax is like that. Okay, you have to um, create a, a mock class, okay, use the get, get mock builder, and then uh, pass in what is the class that you want to mock. And then this is the uh, tricky part. You don't want to, um, so if the thing is, you just want to mock that particular function and then ask to return that fixed uh, result they want. So you basically just ask them to, okay, I want to uh, mock just this particular function. Then at the next line, right, you tell PHP unit, okay, if you hear, if you, if you see this function, right, always return this value which in this case is just a simple number 10. Okay. Then, so when it actually runs the test at this assertion here, right? See, I check some two. Uh, over here, check some two. Check some two is, you know, running this, this check some, this generate number. So when it comes to here, you remember that, oh, you mocked it. So what do you want to mock as? What, what is the return value you want to mock? Oh, it's 10. So, okay, sure, 10. So, you come here, oh, uh, it's 10. Then you go back to this uh, function, then this checksum 10 plus 4. So, it will give you as 14. Okay, I can. Okay. So, that is for mocking a simple function that returns a, a, a value. The same goes when you are doing for database. Um, actually, the syntax is, is almost exactly the same. What changed is basically the function uh, call that you want to mock and then give it a value over here. 
Uh, in this simple illustration, you just see constants, but in actual reality, you can actually get PHP unit using mocking uh, to return an uh, object, a return a class, or return an array. So it's, it's perfectly up to you how you want to um, play with this return value here. Okay. So, so with this, right, I'm going to run a, a, a demo. Oops. So, so you can see I actually got some errors somewhere just over there. Let me just clear this. Okay, to run PHP unit, that's the this the part where I uh, need to. You have to put your PHP unit or XML in the correct place. In Drupal seven, the PHP unit uh, is actually at the the XML is also at the root folder. Can you see uh, the this is. Let me just you can see. Yeah. yeah. So is is this? Yep. Where's my mouse? Okay. This uh, PHP XML, which is like that. Okay. You need to specify which directory your test is. It, it may not be the actually the correct way, but because Drupal seven is slightly convoluted, so by right actually, um, there's the the if you do your own simple PHP application, there's um, your folders probably uh, can be don't need to be so specific as to what well, like sites or modules or this. You actually can just have a simple um, test folder, and you auto know um, where to look for a test. Your modules, your module codes as well as your test codes. So I'm going to run this. I'm in my root folder. Then I'll just run this command, which is uh, PHP unit, then the test and the location of the test. And then I get, you know, just like that. I get the uh, pass. So when everything pass, of course, very nice. Uh. Um, of course, uh, to show you the, this is the happy case uh, when you get everything correct. But let's say, I'll, so like just now this uh, afternoon, right, I was testing, testing the limits of my code, uh, which is this, you saw this commented out, right? So check some, so the thing about testing um, is that besides testing for the cases that the happy cases or the not so happy cases that you know, uh, you need to test for very weird cases. Like you, because the thing about humans is that you know that the input surely is number lah. Because you write the code yourself, you know usually it's put in number. But you have to think slightly more. Yeah? like think in a in a like a weirder way. Like what if I put in a string? What would be the result? You know. Okay, so let's. I I, I assume that zero. I assume. And then uh, let me just yeah save it. Let me save. Okay, let's run. Ah, uh, then I fail. You know, and and PHP unit was able to tell me um, which test fail and uh, what what is it that fails. You know, so uh, so, so apparently, I thought it would give me zero, but the function still returns me as four. Uh. So if you look at the function code, right? Okay, this this is the this is the thing. So let's say if my input value is a a a, it still returns me as four. So that's the that's the part where you. Okay, I don't I don't have the full answer to this yet, but I know why why is I probably just need to have an if else check to make sure that is the the type is correct or else if I just return as zero, that that should be the correct way. Right? So um, that is. All for my uh, little sharing of my PHP unit journey with Drupal 7. Hope you guys uh, are not too confused. I hope you all can learn something about PHP unit or at least spurs you all to actually get to know more about PHP unit and to use it in your applications. Yep. Thank you. Any questions for Ken? No? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.